Live. I'm I'm hitting live right now. I just hit live. Here we go. It's fixing the comp. All right, it says we're live. What the hell? Live. It's on. Uh, Hello and welcome, over. everybody. Oh, Give live. it just a second. We uh, we'll make sure the feeds are up. If you guys are tuned into this, um, go ahead and uh, throw us a thumbs up. Let us know you're watching. I'm Sam, uh, the small business surgeon. I got Brian Lewis with me from We Ride at Dawn, and uh, this is our live Monday evening podcast. Get some fire. Um, Brian came up with that name. Brian, you like that name? Or are we going to change that name, bud? Yeah, man. Get some fire, man. Fire oh, starts it. fire. We know it's this. Fire. Well, we got two. We got two flaming uh, fires on the uh, on the show tonight. I'm very, very happy to have these guys here. They're on the middle of a freaking transcontinental expedition. So, uh, welcome, James uh, Giles and uh, Atom Miller. James, is it Giles or Giles? Did I get that right, mate? You You know what, man? You're probably the first guy in about uh, ten years that got that right. So I appreciate that. <laughs> so which one was it, Giles? James it's, Giles? It's Giles. It's Giles. You had it right, man. The uh, Jay Giles I band, you. you know. I appreciate Jay Giles band. Yep. <laughs> yeah, dude. All right. Yeah. So, um, let me. I've got to hit a couple of share buttons. I think uh, James is just going to reconnect his audio there. He was starting a little bit, um, starting to sound a little bit underwater. So, Adam, tell us a little bit, mate, about what it is you're doing because you just locked yourself in a van and drove across the country, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, uh, the reality is, is we're having a little bit of fun, right? But uh, I was at the last Apex Live, and I was talking to some people about my story, which is involves my son um, getting shot 12 times and, and surviving it. But it, it threw me for a massive loop in my life, and, and I had to hit the reset button, as most of us do from time to time. That's so we got, we got in the van, and um, I was talking to uh, Josh Thomas, and I said, Josh, you know, I'm writing a book. Here's my story. It's called Raised by Wolves. And I really want to tap into the inner workings of, of human beings in general. And I'm that type of person that wants to give back. So he says, I got to write that book with you. And fast forward, I'm right here next to the unit. And um, and we're doing it. So we left uh, about 13 days ago on our journey down to Apex Live to see Ryan Stuman in the gang. And it was phenomenal. Uh, on the way down, myself, Steve Apodaca, James Giles, and Josh Thomas, we started to write the audio portion of this book, and we got a lot of great content. Uh, the title, the original title, subtitle was um, Seven Things to Avoid Historical Mistakes in Your Life for a Man. <laughs> and uh, it's migrated from there, but that's our, that's our premise, that's our purpose, and we're just going as hard as we can. Oh, there my, he is. My computer completely crashed on me. Like, it just, that, like, it, and that's the force of average today for me. That's what happens. <laughs> my computer just, yeah. yeah, it just completely crashed. So we're going to just be sc sharing the screen. Well, it's a good thing you're in the right same way. van, right? Yeah, we're yeah, in the yeah. same van right now. Absolutely. So before we get too deep into this, guys, um, I am watching and monitoring. And we got Josh and Zach watching online. If you get, If you guys have any questions for James or Adam about their uh, <clears throat> about their trip and about this excursion, uh, we are live. Throw them up in the comments, and I will uh, I'll ask them at the appropriate time. So uh, now we've got you on the phone, dude, and now we've got you mobile. Why don't you show us around this uh, this van that is home for you guys? Show us check the show show your journey. Yeah, so um, here we are. How, there's four of you living in there right now. There's two. Four. Okay. Uh, two of them already flew home, but. Last week, trust me, there was four. Uh, <laughs> it's not a big so, van for uh, four people. Right. So here's the here's the uh, cabin. These uh, spin around. These seats, very comfortable. Executive chairs up here. Um, and then we've got things such as we got our clothes still out. That's not a <laughs> right? so, that's not so a van. We, that's a palace. Yeah, look, it's at, a palace. look at that. That's incredible. This has uh, you know some dirty dishes in there. Some water in here it's got its own little fridge and not only that but it has its own shower and toilet in here as well as a microwave Shinner's full and a place to sleep dude that's incredible so you that, got a little that's a palace right there that's that's this too thing cool. is phenomenal <laughs> it's our adventure <laughs> LED lighting going uh, on there. uh that's cool hold stuff. on I've I've got to I've got to do something. You'll carry on the interview. I'm gonna make it even cooler here in a second. You'll just yeah, yeah. you'll just okay. stand by. 
All right, so where you been so far? So where we've been is I flew from Las Vegas up to Oregon, Portland, mm -hmm. where he picked me up with a fishing pole and a piece of candy right at the curbside. <laughs> in a white band, too. My yeah, band. yeah, in a white band. Um, and Free then we went down towards, I'm going to let him narrate the distance here from there all the way to uh, um, Susanville, California. Oh, yeah. So we went from Portland, Oregon. We went down to Klamath Falls. Uh, we made a couple pit stops. We went and uh, saw Adam's um, stepson, had dinner with him. Then we went down to Susanville, California. And then from Susanville, we drove. We got down to Vegas that day. Well, well we went to Reno. Oh, that's right. We went to Reno and we saw Jory. We went oh, to cool. his... Uh, yeah, so good we dude, went yeah. to his, yeah, so we went to his solar place. Oh, awesome. Um, you know, Adam got a new gun there. I, don't know if I, I, ended up, I ended up picking up a nice little uh, automatic shotgun, which doesn't suck. Yeah, you need so that. That was fantastic. Yeah. Just supporting some Apex brothers along the way and sisters. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Man. Jory got my watch fixed because he's got a... Uh, oh, yeah, he's got this pawn shop there, yeah. He's got the pawn shop, so he fixed some stuff for me. And then Alex Keats... Came over and had lunch with us. Oh, we got Josh coming in. Yeah. Bang! Oh, Josh, oh there you in. go. Uh -huh. <laughs> what do you think I was working on? <laughs> there we go. There we go. Unmute yourself, Josh. There you go. Hey, what's, what's up, up brothers? It's <laughs> <What's laughs> like a family on, reunion buddy? going on now. Oh, long time no see. <laughs> yeah, man. It's been a whole like two days. <laughs> so, That's welcome right. to the show, the uh, the other Josh. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Very you cool. were in the van too, right? I was there. I was in the van. I was in the RV, and uh, actually have the uh, this. This is where this is where all the magic happened in this little Zoom H4. The entire book was recorded on this. Surprisingly enough, that's not a taser. That's actually yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it did look like a weapon there for a minute, yeah, right? but it's not. Yeah, it was, was it's, it's, it's weapon of clarity. Yeah, yeah. So, were there any fights in the van then? Uh, yes, one, and I started. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot about that one. That's yeah. right. The it's just a just a minor no just a minor tiff, man. Boundaries. Yeah, just a minor tiff, dude. You you got you got four sleepy dudes riding around in a van, and like sometimes it's like uh, you know somebody's got to bark every once in a while. It's no big deal. Hopefully, yeah. they need a Taco yeah. Bell along the way. <laughs> <laughs> no. I I don't think we stopped at Taco Bell once. All right, that's trip. probably a good thing right there. Yeah. Yeah, it was probably a good thing. Yeah. Um, okay, so we so we were in Reno. Um, and then from Reno we went to Las Vegas. Cool. Um, and then I missed you all in Las Vegas by hours. Like oh, we, right. yeah. we we got there the afternoon, the morning you left. Otherwise I, I would come you. and hang out. Yeah, I saw that. Um so we made it to Vegas. Adam's wife watched my kids for the night, so me and the wife went out on a date. Cool. Um, oh, and I, I should probably start this journey off with, uh, we had a couple hiccups on picking up people. So to start the journey off, Adam missed his flight. So we were a day late. Um, and then I went to go pick up Josh from the airport, and I couldn't find him. I couldn't find him for like 45 minutes. Like, could not find the guy. So I'm like, yeah. okay, this is, this is. Did you pick up team. Jason by accident? <laughs> is that what happened? Oh, hold on. Let, let me get there. Let me get there. Um, so we went out. Uh, Josh got there. We went up trick or treating with my kids. We hung out for a couple of hours. Um, we sat down next to the pool and just, just chatted and, uh, you know, had some good conversations. Actually, they probably should have been the ones recorded. Um, <laughs> But uh, of course, you want to let's grab that charger. Your phone's got ten percent, man. We're we're gonna die. We're gonna we're gonna lose it. Have some faith. Uh, <laughs> Have some faith. Believe. <laughs> um. All right. So let me let me paint you in picture for the next morning. So Adam missed the flight. Josh was the, I, I couldn't find him for a couple of hours. So we go to Steve's house to pick him up at six o'clock in the morning. Six thirty. Was it six six thirty, Josh? Yeah, pretty early. Yeah. Um. So we go to pick him up, and 
I wanted to do like the, the hangover thing and just, <laughs> you know, grab him out of his house. So we, we go there. I ring on the doorbell of this house and a uh, shirtless dude that is definitely not Steve comes out instead. We were we were one street off. <laughs> oh, at like at like six thirty in the morning. Oh, he was yeah. probably happy. So, that, so what did he say? Steve yeah. home? Can Steve come <laughs> yeah. out? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I, uh, hey, is uh, is Steve there? And he was like, he's like, uh, no, nah, man. <laughs> <laughs> you're on the you're in the wrong street, dude. Steve's one street over. <laughs> Yeah, actually, I got, uh, I don't know if this is on a podcast or a visual, but this is a picture of me with uh, with James's, James's kid in the oh, T-Rex yeah. costume. I'm nice. wearing the banana suit. Yeah. That, is, that is definitely an improvement. I think, uh, <laughs> you know, I that's why I love the banana suit, because, like, you can't look at a dude in a banana suit and be pissed off about anything. Like, whatever you're upset about, you see a guy in a banana suit, and you're just like, well, what the hell was I mad about anyway? It doesn't matter. <laughs> and he got the most candy out of all the kids. I did, man. I dominated. He, he like, would go yeah, up I to bet the you, house. You dominate a little league, too. I mean, come on, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, he did. It's just, it's just wrong at this point. You know? Exactly. All right. All right. So we're going to keep the, the journey moving. Okay. So we, we pick up Steve um, after we go to the right house. You didn't offer um, the shirtless guy a ride? None of it? I did. I offered him candy. I offered him puppies. <laughs> I said, "Hop in the great van. We're gonna have a fun time." I mean, honestly, I thought I thought that it was the uh, lead singer for Rage Against the Machine. That's who I think it was. <laughs> uh, like, still talking about that guy, yeah. Yeah. Um, so then we we got Steve, and then we went out. We got some coffee in the morning. Got some breakfast. Uh, Steve shared his big post that he's gonna go work for phone sites. So that was really cool that we got to be there, um, seeing him do that. That was a, a big a great deal, man. Yeah, yeah. So we're we're super pumped for him. Um, and then we started making our journey down to Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah. yeah. Um, so right. we got We we left. Uh, we left left Las Vegas. We made it to Phoenix probably about I want to say like twelve or one o'clock. Um. Kind of give you a time frame. We stopped for pizza. It was good. We did yeah, stop for pizza. Important. And then uh, we went ATV shooting. We, we went, we hopped on an ATV and we went shooting wolf mach- tours. So, yeah. So we went into wolf tours. We started to um, handle is, some. Is that like an Apex's uh, business or is that something you found on the road? No, it's just uh, some, somewhere we found along the way. There's a guy, Hunter, not Hunter Probst, but there's another guy um, who has this business out there. And they just do all these ATV tours, and we got to manage uh, four machine guns, 25 rounds of pop, and it was over in seconds. But we got a lot of uh, a three-hour, three-and-a-half-hour tour in the Arizona mountains, um, Josh, rock country. Do you have any awesome. pictures on your phone you can show on? Well, we can post them on the on the uh, live feed when we do that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's awesome. So um, that was it. And, and we had a great time there. Um. And when we were finished there, it's all a black off from there for me. <laughs> okay. We did so Josh, we did actually we did actually go. Jason Labrash does my twin. He yep. does live in Phoenix. And so we ended up going to his house. We went to his metal shop, which did was you confuse really his cool. kids at all? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his wife walked up and gave me a kiss. And I was like, honey. Hey guys. <laughs> it's it's me, Uncle Dad. Are you my dad? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, but he had like he had this pile of carne asada, like pounds and pounds of it. I'm like, dang, man. He was like, he was ready. <laughs> and so we sat down and we, we broke bread with him and, and it was really, really nice. And, uh, and then the next morning, uh, we ended up at Nicole Coyle's, uh, yoga studio and we did Nam yoga <laughs> and we were, we rolled in like rock stars, man. Like we showed up to the class late. Uh, we walked in, she gave us a hug and we're like, Hey, can we join your class? And we're like, yeah, sure. And so one of the ladies like set up the mats for us in front. So we yeah. showed up late. We rolled in, we set up front, we hooked up a bunch of cameras. Like we seriously did the rock star situation there, but it was, it was such a cool experience, man. That's awesome. That's awesome. I haven't so met cool. her yet. Um, I'm, I'm actually interviewing her later this week. I'm, I'm really looking forward to getting to know her. Uh, Nicole, that uh, should be, uh, should be a good one. Man, so where did you go after? How did you like yoga? Because like, I like the well, idea of yoga. I just don't particularly fancy the execution. It looks quite difficult. 
Well, so just to clarify, I, I've been doing yoga for like about a year and this is Nam yoga, which is like a, like a rhythmic chant kind of thing. It's not really non -yoga, all like, that, like yoga, but you're not really doing it. Yeah, that's right. N A A M. Okay. Nam. <laughs> there was Nam. there was zero there was zero yoga poses. Just so right. you know, it was more like breath work, yeah, uh, and things of that nature. And uh, make it, it, it was amazing. It was a good time. Uh, it, yeah. It, it, Nicole was very hospital. Like she was just open arms. She just wanted us there. We wanted to be there. Yeah, it was phenomenal. Really cool. There was like thirteen or fourteen women and just four four <laughs> dudes not knowing what they're doing in the front of the in front of the room right yeah. so, None of us knew what we were doing. that sounds like a night out with brian yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know what someone's got to do baxter it baxter over here ate a whole wheel of cheese and i'm not even mad <laughs> <laughs> i don't think i did i think he might be yeah, just see i think he ate all kind of ice cream. Yeah, that's for sure i did have a, i did have a go you know what i when i shared my story for the last time with the boys i went from the front seat of the van to the back to the van and i legitimately ate a pint of ice cream and he just dominated he demolished it man it was, it was gone yeah i'm pretty I, sure what flavor ovulated. I, I was pretty sure i was emotionally eating for about I, five minutes I what flavor it was though? called i believe it was called the tonight dough right. it was it was right tonight though right <laughs> it happens yeah man um, so, who got the cleanest shitter though uh, we did no, not no. shit in the van. Oh, okay. Shit is full. Or I did. That would be that. number one rule. Yeah. That would be yeah, number no, one should, rule. Yeah, no shit should, in the van. I shit in somebody else's van. That's it. It was a bad a day. Weird. It was a bad day at the RV he, dealership. He just went and like, found new homes the whole time. He's like, can I go home with you guys? <laughs> I was like, so how are you, how are you guys doing? <laughs> I'll be right. To, I'll be done in a minute. The whole time. <laughs> the whole time. That's how it was the whole time. All right, all right. So let's see here. So we we went to Nicole. Where do we go after Nicole's? I'm trying, I, I'm, this is where Josh has to pick up the story. Yeah, Josh. He's got a really vivid memory. <laughs> I'll catch up somewhere along the. Well, yeah. We got somewhere around to the Carlsbad Caverns. That's where yeah. I remember everything. Is that okay. where we went next? Just no, there is there's a gap there. So it um, sounds to me like you traveled through a, a, a weed legal state and forgot everything. <laughs> <laughs> that's what yeah. I'm hearing here. So there's this like period of time. <laughs> yeah, right? The van yeah. became a time machine. Yeah, we <laughs> ended up after after Nicole's uh, after Nicole's class. Uh, we went to Tombstone, Arizona. Oh, dude, how was that? Right, that's did right. We, I forgot about that. We, yeah, we did. pretty when neat. Did, when did we go to uh, When did we go to the campfire? Thing? The, the uh, that was the last the, night. Yeah, because uh. we went to Tombstone. We got our old time pictures together. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. They went to the bar, and I went to the coffee shop. That's right. Yeah, yeah. we got the old. We got these old timey pictures together, and um, and I don't know. I mean, it's just like a little town, you know. There's there's nothing like super special about it, but it is kind of neat. Like if you saw the movie, I think you would appreciate it. Hmm. Um, there's the OK Corral and. You know, a bunch of Wyatt Earp theme stuff, Doc Holiday stuff, um, but it's like, man, it is just out there in the middle of nowhere, dude. What There's do you mean just if you saw around. the movie, everybody's seen that movie. That movie was just legendary. That's true. Like, yeah. If if you've seen yeah. the movie, yeah. come on, dude. Yeah. There was nothing else to do in 1995 when that came out. That's right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. So the internet just started. That's right. Yeah. Right. And so, <laughs> so we'll, we can we can post this picture up. But yeah, the, uh, that's awesome. You know, <laughs> Yeah, we made made Steve be the uh, the are you all, dre you all are dressed up, right? Yeah, yeah. that's oh, why you're dressed wow. normally. I couldn't tell yeah. if it was like no, I couldn't tell if it was one with the hole where they stuck their faces in the hole. Although no, you're <laughs> yeah. dressed up, we re yeah. we legitimately got dressed up. Yeah, man. Hey guys, while he's pissed, he never got his candy. That, yeah, was there was, was, there was some lady through. there taking the picture, and uh, she was giving James shit because he was from Oregon. <laughs> Oh, that's right. She was harassing me like no other. She just, she did not like me. But hold on a second. She had a pink streaker in her hair. So she was some kind of organ too. And she drove a VW. So I'm like. In Tombstone, Arizona. Yeah. No judgment here. Yeah. Two, yeah. two of, two of my, full disclosure, two of my favorite ladies in the world have pink streaks in their hair. Like, we'll just leave them Fantastic. out. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Oh, oh, no, she, she was great. She yeah, we'll, we'll get like shot. Me, or like me yeah. too much. She was, she was 
scared of short people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then, yeah, from there, man, we, we hit the road and the destination was uh, a really rundown Econo Lodge in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Oh, yeah. Yeah, with like but, with the cesspool swimming pool in the back that had like dirty diapers hanging, floating around in it. It was kind of nasty. Yeah. We, uh, <laughs> James and I slept in the van yeah. pretty much yeah. every day. In the van. Except the night we stayed in a tent one night. Yeah. That's right. So the boy, so Josh and Steve stayed in the van one night. And then, yeah. uh, that's right, Steve snored. So, yeah. so we come, oh, I come in, I come and open the, the van at like eight in the morning to grab my one wheel to go get coffee. Poor Josh is sleeping yeah. in the chair. I'm like, just like I'm hunched like, over. What? Like, man, it was hilariously. But like it, I felt bad for him at the moment, but in hindsight, it was the funniest thing of the day. You didn't get that pictures. Guy, that guy can snore. With oh, yeah. uh, uh, pictures, I didn't get pictures of sleeping. Yeah, sleeping. No, we didn't really have anything um, provocative. I mean, we'll go ahead and post those That's things. Where you later. get those incriminating yeah. pictures, you know? I got Benny when he was sleeping. It didn't go to the workout oh. at Apex, you know. I still hold that one. <laughs> oh, that part. I remember yeah. that. Remember yeah. that? Yeah. And then I told you how mean you were. I should let him sleep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah so we went to las cruces um josh then, shared his, his story that was the, the one takeaway i got from from our drive drive is josh shared his uh his key story which i can't share it for him but it is very very powerful very very moving and, and these I'm, key stories they're gonna be in the book right we can read them it, oh, yeah. we, yeah. we have four key stories e each one of us has a key key story mm -hmm. yeah um, the answer to that's yes it, yeah. yeah we avoided that part uh, and uh and 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 josh was like he did it one take like i actually i made him pull over to give him a hug when we were done <laughs> i'm like true. i need to go I, i'm like i need to go to the bathroom i was lying to him i just wanted to hop out and give him a fucking <laughs> hug and I made nice. Steve hop out and give him a big bear hug too because yeah. it, it was just I, I I I can't explain his words, but it's moving, and especially with the nature of the book, you got to read his. How, how does it feel to get what you want by lying? <laughs> he doesn't give me anything. <laughs> Matter of fact, Josh is the one that calls my shit out the most. So. Uh, I, that's probably the worst thing I could do. I should go hide right now. <laughs> um, yeah. So it, it was good. Lost. It was a good trip, man. Like you know, it, I I remember just people are asking me, "Hey, how how'd this go?" And and when I reflect back on it, yeah, you know, I really don't know these guys that well. And when we all agreed to just jump in a van together, and on the other side of that, you know, those four days were transformational in a lot of ways because it, it really teaches you there are certain things that you need to do in in your life and and every once in a while you need to you need to stop and take a breath like 100%. we're all busy i don't i don't know who's listening to this but we're all busy people if you're an entrepreneur or a business owner or something like that man you got your hustle going uh you got to make your money you got to put out your fires you know you got to talk to your clients follow up you got to do all this shit but every once in a while, man, you got to take a breath. 100%. Like the four of us, we're all busy guys. And we all carved out a week of our lives to sit in a fan. Uh, and me and Adam have more. This is 13 yeah. days right now. Yeah. So. These, guys are, these guys are rolling up on two weeks. Steve and I took a week. And yeah, man, you got to take a call. You got to like hammer out some shit while you're working. Like, yeah, we all did that a little bit. But for the most part, we were, we were mission focused. And and that's tough to do when you're busy and you got a lot of shit going on. But but you know what? The world didn't crumble. You know our businesses didn't die, and and we no gained from that. Did you come um, back? Did you come back with more money than you had when you left? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. The answer not. to that is absolutely yes. Good, <laughs> good. Like, like yeah, a, no, I mean for for me, like it's only it's only recently that I can actually leave my business and come back and know that the shit's going to be fine. Like yeah. it's, it's really with just within the last you know, three to four months that we've got it stable enough to where I can walk away. And I was just wondering if you guys have reached that point in yours and, and this week was maybe a watershed for you. Uh, I like, I, I saw like Steve, Steve was hustling 
in the back. Every time he'd hop on the computer, he was writing insurance. And then I, I know Josh pretty much closed my wife on getting onto her his coaching program. <laughs> Within five minutes of talking, she's like, oh, let's do that. So I, I would like to say Josh probably, you know, he, he's going to make out on that one. Um, <laughs> and then actually me and uh, – Adam went to Corey's place yesterday. We went over to the, the sex shop and uh, checked out his store. How is that? How is it, that? Was, it was it was nice and it was clean and it wasn't super afraid he was going to chip a tooth on something. But <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel out, like turned out fine. I, I feel was, like my bands. I was panicking for nothing. More inappropriate than Corey's shop is. <laughs> 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 all right, all right. So let, let's let's get back to the journey. Let's let's get back to the journey. <laughs> no, no. no. The, the the I want to hear how you chipped a tooth on a plastic penis. <laughs> we'll get it. We'll get it. Uh, there, there's. Uh... He did bring one to Apex, and he threw it to Danny Galvez. Oh, that's right. Corey got me a. Corey got me a dick. <laughs> it's over there. It's under the bed, in there. Oh, it's under the bed. Yeah. Okay. Like where else would you? In some bed? compartment over there. Ah. I'm not really sure. Really anyway, it's a, it, it seems like it should be a thermos. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it should. It, I think it seems like it should be a thermos, but I'm not sure it's gotten to that point yet. Thermos. Oh, oh that, yeah, that's I weird. Should, I think they were passing around. You can fill it up with. I, I, oh, the white thing. Yeah, the big one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was my. Uh, Corey got me a break. I didn't see any of that. that was oh, you don't have to. Longer. You don't have to keep. Uh, I feel like he's searching it for too long now. Like he really needs it. He's probably got to wipe it off. <laughs> but Corey, Corey was a game changer. I liked him immediately because I'd never met the guy, and he shows up with like the equivalent of a of a guitar case full of dildos to a right. convention. And he's like, "Yeah, I'm selling these." I'm like, "Well, that's that's fairly bold." It's have you seen Have you it. seen that Joey Joey Yak uh, commercial that they did? Uh uh-uh, uh, no. Oh yeah, yeah. Phenomenal. I'll have to DM you that thing. It's oh hilarious. yeah, send it, man. I want to see it. Because okay. you know, oh, all jokes aside, too. you know, I'm marketing a treat, sex yeah. shop is is very difficult. There's a lot of places you can't run ads for that kind of stuff. I'd love to see what Joey came up with. So yeah, he did. He did an incredible job. Okay, so we took off from Lamarcus, Lamexis, Mexico. Arizona, were we in Arizona? Las Cruces? Whatever. You were in Las, you were in Las Cruces last time we uh, we did. We yep. Chatted, yeah. And then uh, Mr. Adam uh, opened up and spilled his guts and shared his story for the next probably two hours or so mm-hmm. of driving. And I'm trying to think where do we where do we go, Josh? Uh, after Las Cruces, we went to uh, the uh, Carlsbad Caverns. Yeah, that's right. So we went to Carlsbad that Caverns. Awesome. We were there for, I think, three hours. Yeah, we were Four there hours. for around three hours. Yeah. Um, no cell service. Couldn't get a hold of each other. Um, just walked around and checked everything out. Yeah, for um, me, it was it was uh, one and a half hours of just personal reflection. I was, didn't have anybody else in my head at that time. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. but those caverns are completely amazing. We, we've got a ton of pictures of probably over 300 between the four of us. Yeah. No, it was, it was super. Josh has all the pictures. So if you want pictures, Josh pictures. has them. Yeah. He's got, he's our implementer. He just takes care of everything. Oh, wow. I'm just totally Googling them. Um, so for the guys on the live feed, I'm going to throw up. I'm, I've just covered y'all's faces. Um, here's some pictures of the Carlsbad cabins. Uh, wow. They look, uh, they look pretty impressive to be fair. Um, um so from there we drove to one of josh's good friends and we stayed at her house we had pizza and a bonfire and spent the night there and um steve sat us all around the bonfire and he unleashed some demons there he made oh, yeah. three adult men cry Damn. like he uh, do you guys remember going seeing Danny Chavez or Chavez? Yeah, at Entrep- yeah, he's powerful. Yeah, Dave. at the entrepreneurs. Yeah, at the entrepreneurs. So Steve did the same thing to us as, as Danny did this time. Um, just had the absolute most powerful story. 
Um, I'm going to have to listen to the audio because I don't remember what I was doing, but I wasn't there until the end. So yeah, definitely looking forward to listening to that. Um, so we stayed there, had a bonfire, uh, made and, some new friends. Yeah. You know, speaking of that, uh, I, I have to, I have to say like the, the importance of having people in your life that are, that are just going to say like whatever crazy ass idea you come up with, they're going to just be like, all right, cool. I'll bring the pizza. <laughs> You know, like those are the people you need in your life, man, because oh, yeah. it's uh, it's my my friend Carly. Uh, she lived here in Austin and she moved back home to Odessa, which is where we were. It's about five hours west of of Austin. That's where we landed for the night. And I texted her. I hadn't talked to her in months. And I was like, hey, Carly, um, me and four dudes are rolling into Odessa in a van. Um, can you just like find some way to like show us around or something? And she's like, yeah, what time are you going to be there? I got you. And I was like, oh, I don't know. We're going to be there like eight. She's like, all right, cool. I'll get some pizza and some snacks and drinks. We're going to go over to my friend's house and we're going to start a bonfire. And we're going to hang out and drink. Those are the kind uh, of friends you need, dude. Yeah. yeah. All that, all that and stuff happens too. Like she was, and she was like, she was like, you just tell me when you're going to be there and I'm on it. It's like, I'll take care of everything. And we showed up, dude. And we literally like, we rolled up in a van, four dudes in a van at somebody's house that none of us had ever met and and because we beat carly there and so we're just like here and i'm like hello and this chick walks out doesn't know any of us she's like hey come on in guys nice to meet you and her name was rachel and yep. and she was like come on in come to the house and we we ate and then she started the fire and it was like we'd known each other for decades yeah those are the people you need in your life man those are the best type of friends yeah right yeah. i yeah <laughs> exactly yeah, it was it was it was a real good time i mean well that's kind of five or six hours of just you know talking through things even some of the ladies had some really interesting things to say that they may have been going through as well so it was it was just good to have an open heart of conversation with those individuals so yeah. absolutely yeah man and then the next day uh we roll into dallas uh we got there around two and uh, Sebastian Russ came out and did a, an interview in the van with us. Um, and they were all pretty exhausted and stinky. And so we, uh, I think, I think most of uh, everybody except me went to, uh, went to get the, went to the barber to get a trim, yep. but I, I had just gotten one, so I didn't need it. But, uh, oh, yeah. but yeah, man, the rest is history, man. It's, it's, uh, it, I can't, I can't describe this experience any better than just saying it, it transformed me as a human being. Josh, so what, what did you learn? What did I learn? Yeah. Well, aside from what I was saying earlier about take a breath, mm -hmm. the other thing that I learned was be still and listen. And uh, we were we were basically packed together, four guys with very different backgrounds, and there were a lot of things that we saw differently because of how we grew up and how we experience life and, and the people that we surrounded ourselves with. But we didn't have to agree with each other. All no. we had to do was be still and listen. And when you're still and you listen and you accept, you, you don't have to agree with anybody. Mm -hmm. But if you can accept, that's like the next level of man. Be still and listen so yeah. that you can yeah. accept what life really is. You're making me want to take a road trip now. Same I'm question. You have Dude, to take a road trip. Same mean, question to you guys, though. What, what was your biggest takeaway from, from doing this? Or I mean, you still have a little ways to go. So my biggest takeaway is I need to listen. Um, my biggest takeaway is I need to slow the fuck down. Um, my biggest takeaway is actually some of the things that I don't like to do, I'm actually really good at. Um, and then another, so slowing down. Oh, and my, probably my biggest takeaway is I always felt like the lone wolf growing up, like the internal lone wolf of not mm -hmm. doing things. Me, me and Josh actually had a phenomenal conversation. Um, and Carl's bad about like, uh, where, where our ha happy spots are. So like my happy spot and his happy spots are two wildly different spots, but, but it gets us there. 
Um, but we were talking and, um, you know, and he was kind of saying like, he's really good at doing group projects Mm -hmm. and I'm really bad at doing group projects. And I'm sitting there looking at, um, and I don't want to say like Josh's success because everyone's version of success is differently. But I'm like, man, I really could do that and work with more people and open myself up to be working with other people collaborating where I'm going after their strength. Cause all, all four of us have different strengths. All four mm-hmm. of us have different this. All four of us are able to push each other's buttons in a different way. So I think mine is that I need to collaborate more. I need to slow down. And actually um, one of my things in, in the story was uh, growing up as a kid, I kind of went from house to house to house and um, and I always was like, oh, I don't have great role models. But then I was kind of sitting there really looking back at my life through this trip. And I noticed that my role models weren't there because I wasn't listening. I didn't open my ears and open my eyes. So I could have um, caught on to a lot of things a lot sooner. My, my life could have been a lot easier if I would have listened a little bit more. Shit, I think we can all say that, right? <laughs> hey, guys. Uh, ooh, tapping in. What was the question again? What was the biggest takeaway you got from the experience? I got to outline something first. Um, okay. So when we initially talked about this trip, this was the synergy between Josh and I at the last Apex Live where we had conversations, the story that I heard was that he overheard me saying something about raised by wolves. And then we connected and then we decided at that moment that we're just going to do the book together. Um, and I believe that we'll add on many more will wolves and, and the addition of also women that have some of those things that, uh, that they foxes. need to correct. He's calling them foxes. I want to call them the foxes. It's not a bad idea. Raised by foxes. I, I- I want my goal I is to have five hundred thousand wolves, and I want to have a million foxes following us. Yeah, and that'll happen. So it's just a build it, dude. <laughs> His birthday, five hundred. Yeah, but but to jump into that that so here's what I thought. I wasn't in panic mode, but for me, house it's always been the Lord. And so before I went on the, on this trip, I'd done a lot of praying, and I in my head, here's what I thought. I'm going on a trip with an atheist, a Mormon, an undecided, and and a Jesus lover, myself, right? But what I found out when I got there was he just didn't know it was Jesus for him. <laughs> and it is. And another thing is, is that with Steve Apodaca, it's still the Lord, right? It's just a different story. And then when we got to Nicole's studio and I heard Josh sitting next to me, doing some of the chants that uh, Nicole Coyle didn't instructed us, they were also from the Lord. So he, whether he believes it or not, he was having those conversations out loud. And I think that's a win and fantastic place. Oh, yeah. But um, when, when it came down to it what, it, what I really wanted to get and what I think that I got from this trip was, and I've been praying that for this for several years, um, discernment. You know, discernment and faith in in others, right? Because sometimes we lose that discernment and faith in others. And um, for one reason or another, we call it dysfunctionality. We call it, you know, uh, enmeshment. (laughs) Those are things that I don't don't really like, right? But what I found is talking to these guys, that each one of them could be open to new ideas. And so for me, that's what I pulled out is like I have a better outlook on others uh in the right conditions that they can make open conversations and decisions themselves to just be open to what's next so i'm ex- i'm super excited about how this entire trip went and how it's going right now and yeah. uh that's just my two cents that's awesome well, I, i'm gonna add to your two cents real okay. quick because i had to look up the meaning of discernment because i thought that discernment was more or less, you know, your ability to, to have good judgment. And it turns out, I don't know if you knew this or not, it has a Christian concept. It's the perception in the absence of judgment with a view to obtaining spiritual guidance and understanding. 
And I think yeah. discernment is the uh, the absolute word. You, you nailed it, dude. I had to go look up the context, but you, you absolutely nailed it. So well done. That's where I'm at in my life. I haven't always been there myself. The absence of judgment with a view to obtaining spiritual guidance and understanding. Perfect. I mean, that's exactly what happened on the trip, right? I mean, yeah. You went in, you went in with no judgment and you came out sure. with a new spiritual understanding. Oh, and I think all of our uh, ideas of how it was going to play out was completely different, but I think all of us can agree that it was a lot better than life we ever It's life changing. Than we, we could have ever expected. Yeah. There was hiccups. There was a little couple struggles here and there, but overall it was definitely. Where I was teaching him how to drive, so that was a real. <laughs> <laughs> but that went over well. <laughs> I right, had to right. push the chair forward so he could reach the pedals, and I. <laughs> Not know how to deal with that, but that's all right. We went through it. Taught me just, how to. I, I went and got like a razor shade. Oh, yeah, thing. You, you got all tightened up. I, I've never done that in my life. 35 years old, never done that. It's, it's, totally, <laughs> it's totally worth the money. A hot towel. Yeah, getting a hot towel and a wet shave, totally worth the money. Uh, shout out to Randy if she's watching. <laughs> Randy, <laughs> Randy, Randy's my barber, she does really good work. Mm. No, we the, the intriguing conversation that's just an apex thing for me in general just the just me and sam like we just sat down over a cigar one night and next thing you know we're like brothers from another mother and doing a show together and podcast together our podcast dropped today shameless plug so go check out the uh, small oh it did yeah brian like and from, sam podcast dropped today so make sure you check it out yeah but from, um, from, yeah, definitely. The, we yeah. recorded that in august dude that, yeah, that yeah. was that was one of the that's one of the old ones um, yeah that was uh, I took yeah. a while to get up but um i mean that all started one night we were we were out. We had dinner, right? That was the night we had dinner with, I think, Greg and Thomas, was it? With Greg and Thomas, Thomas yeah. And uh, yeah. I was going drinking, and we just weren't feeling it. We're like, you know, let's go for cigars. And uh, we sat down for, I don't know, three hours in a cigar lounge it, and just got deep was, with each yeah. other and realized that I think we were separated at birth. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you'll have to listen to the episode to hear more about it. Today, but, like, we have, some, we have some staggering parallels. It's really like, crazy. halfway through, we're just like, what What in the world? Did you do this too? I'm like, yeah, we did that too. Everything. We've done the same shit. You know? Now, imagine shit. if you guys took a trip together for a week in a van. I'd kill him. <laughs> <laughs> like, it would be the first recorded transcontin die, transcontinental I'm death by smothering of pillows. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, I, I actually <laughs> want to get like a, a big bus and like have a uh, have like ten or fifteen guys and go from like maybe the east, maybe go from New York to Dallas for an Apex Live event. Dude, I'm totally yep. down. That's like, it. let's go. I'm in. I'm in. I'm but like, you cannot shut Brian Lewis up once he starts talking. <laughs> yeah, it's like I a agree. marble. It's like a marble rolling down a hill. It just That's keeps getting faster and faster. I agree. <laughs> I agree. I, I agree with that statement. Like, I love, yeah, I love really Brian to death, man. You stand in there, and he's got all this energy, and then, and then next thing you know, it's like 15 minutes gone by, and you're just like, yeah, 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 <laughs> and he's still going. He's still got, got more to say. To we got a lot in his head. <laughs> but funny when we were on the trip it was kind of the same thing for me because i had been thinking about this book and all these different facets of what i had gone through in the past 10 years of my life and so on each topic that we discussed and there'll be more i'm certain um i was able to rip out an hour of content oh yeah, oh, yeah. Very without any gaps because man i just been thinking about this for so long the book could probably write itself Mm -hmm. And I think what's going to be great is that there's going to be subsequent books by other people within this new Raised by Wolves scenario um, that a, a ton of books are going to come out from other people that just want to, you know, go with us, walk with us on this. Mm -hmm. I think every, every person I shared, we, you know, we shared our stories too. Yeah. They're like, man, I, I feel you. I've been there. I, I accept you for you because that yeah. happened. And I think the level of honesty that people are, that, people need right now and that's going to change people's lives is just talking about it and having coming from the other side zero judgment like i, I don't know if every, everybody's going to be that way but i have zero judgment and i believe that the guys that i've been traveling with have zero judgment they just anticipate you know there's going to be some strife but listening you could not believe how quiet the van was when somebody else was talking incredible all right, we find that. Yeah. I mean, the, the deeper we get with our struggles and we realize that each one of us has been through some shit. I'm going through shit. Sam's been through some shit. All of us been through some shit. And you realize that, like, wow, like, 
I'm not alone in this shit show. Like, you know, I'd, I'd just like to, I'd just like to say that I'm pretty shit free right now, Brian. Yeah, I'd like to keep it that way, mate. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. Gone I'm through it. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. Don't want to yeah. go back through it. So I'd right. like to stay so shit free. You please. That, if, uh, if everyone's listening, you know, everyone, you know, you think everyone's all like in a good place and you realize where they came from. Even like Ryan Stuman, right? 10 years ago was in jail, started over. Right. You know I mean? That's just, mm-hmm. it's yeah. real. It's like, and the deeper you get, and it's oh. funny in my, in my morning messages, the, the ones that I get a little bit deeper on, people reach out to me more. I've had a lot of DMs that come out of the ones I get a little deeper on. And people are like, yo, I mm-hmm. really connected with that. I'm really struggling with the same thing. I'm really, you know, going through that. And it's, it's really cool that just to get vulnerable and just connect with people. And let them realize that we're real. We're all humans. And, you know, we put this show on yep. Facebook where we're like, everything's, you know, sunshine, rainbows, and unicorns. And, you know, it's really, you know, not that, you know. We've all been through I mean, even guys. James, yeah, even James this morning was going through, you oh. know, the force of average. I was. And, and that's okay. But, you know, I just, what? you know, I nestled him into my chest and grabbed onto him and said, hey, man, it's, it's going to be fine. Just, just yeah. forego this problem. Yeah. There's no dragons. Yeah. Like, there's no brimstone. There is nothing happening up there. Just relax. You're going to be fine. He even had a, got through it. even had so Wiley yeah. call me. Yeah, yeah. Wiley, Wiley handled was like, his uh, Wiley wants wait. his candy. He's, he's saying that uh, he want, you never gave him candy. We're supposed to give him candy. He's messaging over here. Uh, I invited him in the van after hours, and he didn't come in the van after hours. Did you so just try and fact- did you just try and bribe a member of the same sex into a van by offering candy? Yeah, I think he. I, think he, <laughs> I, thought I, got the, I just wanted that on the record. Wait, with the dildo under the, the bed from trust. Corey. It may have been a trust <laughs> issue. It may have been a trust issue. Perhaps. Trust issue, first, yeah. I'm not saying this is possible, but maybe he had a hole in his pocket the first time he said, "Here's some candy." <laughs> No, <laughs> right. it's like Uncle Joe over there. Shit. Um. Um, <laughs> I was gonna add to the sharing. So Josh actually had to not sense to me because I would start sharing and I would keep thinking of how I wanted it to come out. So I would stop myself, but I couldn't share. And it wasn't until he was like, "Dude, you just have to share. You just have to open up. You just have to share." Your story. It doesn't matter how it comes up. I'll clean it up for you afterwards. You just have to say it out loud. It you can't. You can't stop. Yeah, I don't know if they told you. We all have characters on this journey, right? And so, Josh is the implementer, and he's the heart, right? So, <clears throat> there you can tell instantaneously when he's feeling something. It's yeah. like uh, it's like an advertisement with lights around. <laughs> <laughs> And, yeah, basically, and, if you say something that impacts that impacts James, and he has a thought, like he's gonna start like shaking and pointing, and it's like, yeah, I gotta get this bit, out. <laughs> it's the bitmoji with the big tears on it. <laughs> <laughs> For me, I'm the technician. Like, I just want to figure out how stuff works. I want to be able to then implement those things for my life, for my business, make my life a little easier. And then, of course, Steve Apodaca is the advisor. Uh, that guy has an answer for everything. I feel like he's so the, it's fantastic. I feel like Steve's the glue. Yeah. Like, Steve was really because Steve was Steve was number four in the group. So Adam and Josh had their thing. Josh calls me in the middle of the day and goes, "Hey, man, you want to do something with me?" And I think I I'm pretty sure I said yes. Before he was I, running probably be with we, open arms. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, let's go. What are we doing? He's like, uh, we're gonna go from a trip to from your house to. To Dallas, yes, I'll uh, do it. Yeah, let's do it. But uh, but once Steve got in our group and he started showing the story, it, it really opened up. Like he he was the the glue to us. He he put the three of us together and, and made sure we got it done. Yeah, we really gained a ton of trust on this trip, and that's a big deal for me because I don't trust anybody, right? Mm-hmm. And it's and it's weird, but. Um, we get we gained a lot of trust on this on this trip. Right now, somebody's uh, see, he's over there helping somebody out. He is the heart, that's for sure. They're like, hey, can I get a million dollars real quick? And he's doing it with them. So, um, but yeah, so much trust. Like I trust Josh um, undoubtedly, and I was concerned about that. And he was the only one I was concerned about. But there was no judgment there. No, there was no judgment. <laughs> There was no judgment, but it was like a, there was something unknown there for me. And, and all that was is seeing him one time and then saying yes to something like this. And that's all it was. 
you know it, it, it's great i have a feeling if somebody invited me on one of these trips i would absolutely go 100%. Uh-huh. Yeah. i'm in this yeah, moment now so. where it's like we called about the flow you know hanging out with stacy raskies really got me in that mindset i'm actually flying down to go see her on thursday because we were chatting up at uh at uh, live there and she's like uh my uh quarterly meetups thursday you want to go and i'm like uh yeah you know what it just needs to happen but the whole idea of just letting get in flow man just let it happen like you know just yeah not the good energy and just just you know sometimes we're in this grind right we're grinding grinding we don't even know why we're doing it so we need to step back out of it and realize what the hell we're doing and why we're doing it right like like we right. live life a little bit like we get so caught up in in the grind that we stop living life we just grind and sometimes you really just got to take a take a step back and yeah. say hey Let's jump in a van and go cross country because you know what? Work will be there in a week when we get back. You know that's right. You know what we should do? We should jump in um we should jump in a Fox Body Mustang convertible. Let's do it, man. It's nice and shiny. Five point oh, a white one. Yeah, I've seen that. I've seen that. They're probably like from the nineties. Yeah. yeah, I would roll the rag top down and my hair would blow. So clean. I, <laughs> I was wondering who was going to say that. Yeah, uh, but we we definitely <laughs> have say, Beach Run Avenue. On from this. Yeah, I think we got lifetime friendships that that uh, are, undoubtedly, are, yeah. Are on that. Especially I mean, Spooner, you know, poor Adam, I left the kids with him the first day we got to his house. Yeah, I mean, he dropped off the kids at sure. the house, and I was like, it was a, more of a question. I was like, you're not taking your wife out, and you haven't seen her for a month. Well, this poor guy okay. had to see his wife for a month either, and our wives got to Las Vegas at the same time. And I'm like, I'm gonna leave my kids and go on a date night. And have fun. Well, you still got to explain this thing where you live in two <laughs> RVs. Oh, that's it. Uh, you let me know. We'll, we'll do another pot. We'll, you should I'll, probably address it right now. That's uh, a whole other episode. <laughs> yeah, I, I can fill in a whole another We're episode. Out We're gonna... out there. Is this one of your RVs that you're driving around now or no? Is it just a... Yeah, it's one yeah. of them. That's, so that's one so I have there. one that I live in and then I work out of it. You've run out of paper towels, mate. I know. I got paper towels. What? Oh, <laughs> shit. That was, that was Josh. <laughs> He let them all go. He opened up the door, and they all blew out the window. And then all they right. went down the highway, and they're like, "Oh, you want to get really? the house?" Yeah. So, right. Yeah. So Josh leaves for like two days, and now it's judgment. <laughs> it, see how it, that works, yeah. <laughs> right? Or it might have been Steve. But I remember one of them were like, "Do you want to go get the paper towels that are going across the interstate?" No, I'm not going to go get the paper towels. For the record, I, I remember everything. He's the one who kicked them out inadvertently from yeah. where we're standing right now when he jumped out of the van. So, <laughs> just, all yeah. right enough boys it's about time to wrap this up it's been an absolute pleasure awesome. talking to you before we let you go tell us a bit about the book launch about where we can find it on social media and about your plans for the future surrounding that uh, josh you want to go or you want me to go you go uh, first yeah you got it so uh we're currently um gathering all of the audios and data and we, we need to put that through a machine to get it transcribed to see what we have. And then from there, uh, we'll plug any holes and get it edited. So we're looking at probably uh, first of the year is a reasonable time to, to, get, it, uh, to get it published. And if, if Adam's around, I think Adam is handling the, the social media stuff. Um, so if we have anything like that going on, uh, he would be the guy. And it's Raised yeah, by awesome. Wolves? Raised by yeah. Wolves. Cool, cool. I'll, I'll send you a a link to the Facebook one, and then we're going to make an Instagram page tonight. And I know we probably need to start making a YouTube channel. I'll have a, I'll have a Shopify up by the end of the week. Oh, that's right. We got, um, so we got I do have some products on my current website, but I'm going to have an independent one up next, next week with probably about, you know, 20 cool products that people could tap into and hashtag raised by wolves. And I wore a shirt of Josh's face one day. I wore a shirt. Uh, <laughs> space one day, yeah. and uh, I got a I got a film the shirt right here. Oh, hey, how oh. much is Chase paying you to wear those uh, shirts all night? Uh, you know he, 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 I keep telling him, I was like, dude, just sponsor me, and he's like, no, and I'm like, I'm like, just do something, make it. I always have people that ask me. I even <laughs> that's my shirt, Josh, right there. Look at that. That's awesome. Can I do it right? You guys kind of look the same right there. You're going to be twins. I've seen him uh, make that face, though. That, that's it. There it is. There it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it, it was a lot of fun. I think we're going to probably try to do some more trips like this. Maybe I think we need get to do an East Coast world. tour. What do you think? 
Dude, I want to go on one. Like, I want to go. Let's go. Let's, let's run a big, it. big butt. Let's run a bigger yeah. RV, though. Yeah, that's like, yes. wow, that, Let's go to Saskatchewan or whatever it's called. Saskatchewan. Uh, no, we're, yeah. we're getting a smaller, smaller van. We got close in this van. He's uh, <laughs> about to get weird. <laughs> it, All right, boys. Get weird. All, right. All right. Hey, thank you for letting us have. Josh, it's good seeing you, buddy. Yeah. Come on. It's, my best you it's been my right. privilege interviewing you all. It was this great awesome. fun. This it awesome. really was. This was great, guys. Thank you for coming yeah, we'd, on. We'd love to do this again sometime with you guys. And actually, yeah, can can I share my two bands story on a podcast? The next open slot? Yeah, that's two bands. Yeah. Two bands. I'll get two mama bands. on. Two bands. Like on my podcast? Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm kind of a hoe yeah. at this point, so whoever would take me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good times. Well, I, I tremendously appreciate you guys, yeah. you know, letting us tap in, Stan, Brian. I mean, it's um, – I've never been on a podcast <laughs> except for the one that we went on with Sebastian the other day. And it's it's just good being able to talk about your story and be face-to-face and, and have conversation with other people that um, – just embrace knowledge and embrace who you are. So. Dude, I, I love doing it. I've made so many friends. And now you guys are my friends, too. You don't have a choice. We were already friends, Sam. Yeah, yeah we were. Yeah, but Adam, <laughs> I'd never, too. Yeah, no, I'd never met I'd never met Adam. I mean, I've met yeah. both versions of Josh. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've met the Joshes and the James. Yeah, Adam's new to me, too. Yeah. 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 And you know what? I'm also, I, I know he's not, but I'm also a Gemini. So I do have an alternate ego that can show up at any time. <laughs> I'm a Capricorn. I don't know what Capricorns do. We get shit done. Well, James, Josh, I will send you? you a booking link to my show. We'll get you on yeah. that. The, cal- the calendar's pretty full. It'll be in probably in the next six weeks or so. But no, I'll send you one. Fine. I'll send you one today. Love, we'll book a spot. I would love to do that. It would be and, a lot of fun. Uh, both, yes. all you guys, uh, open awesome. invitation. So, all right. I have to go. You're welcome to all stay. Right. Yeah, it's my daughter's birthday. birthday. I got a wee co- birthday cake with her. Oh, yeah. Get out of here. All right. Go get some cake. All right. Thank you for watching, Bye, guys. guys. We'll be Thanks, back guys. next week with another Get Some Fire podcast. Awesome. We'll see Sounds you all soon. Good. Have a great week. Bye. All right. All right. We're good.